I'm struggling, guys. Asthma, bronchitis, and laryngitis, but I'm here because it's this week in rideshare news. Uber and Lyft drivers plan to strike on May 8th to demand better pay and working conditions. Drivers will stop taking rides for 24 hours. Demonstrations will take place in Los Angeles, San Diego, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta. And also, I believe that there will be a demonstration in front of Uber headquarters. If you'd like more information about the strikes, that information is in the description. Senior Consumer Advice Editor at Edmunds.com talks about the hidden costs involved with rideshare. He says, as most people that get into rideshare don't understand that there are other costs that you don't consider. That was a really good interview, and for new rideshare drivers, I think this is a must to pay attention to. He says most people look for a car but don't realize the maintenance costs and the dep depreciation over time. He said people go and buy the cheapest car, but they don't factor how much the maintenance will be, especially with the kind of wear and tear we put on our cars. He also said that people don't project the depreciation. The high usage makes your car depreciate greatly. By the time you're done with the car, you probably won't be able to sell it for much. What he does offer in terms of tips is to find out how much a car will cost for you to get it and how much it will cost to maintain. In fact, there's a tool on their website that will let you know both of those things. So if you're in the market looking for a car, you have to factor in the maintenance part. You can't ignore the maintenance part. You have to take care of your car. If you don't, you're not going to be able to drive. So if you're curious about that story, you can find that link in the description. The Business Insider interviews Uber and Lyft drivers to find out what the most annoying things passengers do. I find this to be funny because this is news, really. Come talk to me. I can give you a whole bunch of story ideas. I want to share some of the things on the list and let me know if you guys agree that these things are annoying. Eating smelly foods, marijuana, disagreeing with the route, slamming the door, bad manners, making female drivers uncomfortable, not being ready to go, not tipping, using incorrect route, or vaping. Personally, and I drive here in Los Angeles, I've never had anybody want to vape in my car. I definitely have had people try to smoke cigarettes and weed in my car. Um, but I would say that most of these things are things that I found annoying. One thing that's not on the list is inappropriate touching. Do not get sexy in my car. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to be bothered. Why you find this car to be a place to make out, I don't know. Because I'm not into it. So that's one thing that's not on the list. Do you guys have an annoying thing that's not on this list? Please leave that in the comments. Uber Pro launches this week. And everybody's like, what's Uber Pro? Uber Pro is a driver loyalty program for drivers that have high ratings and low cancellation rates. The program provides increased pay free tuition, and all kinds of discounts and cash back on fuel purchase. The program was first tested in 10 markets, and it's now expanding to 20 markets. The program will be extended to Uber Eats carriers as well. Across the board, it seems like everyone's entitled to cash back on fuel purchases, discounted maintenance, and free roadside assistance. The part that I like the most is that they're offering free tuition to Arizona State University for English classes or entrepreneurial classes that you can take online. And the best part is if you don't want to take advantage of it, you can gift it to someone else. So that's the nuts and bolts of the Uber Pro program. I think it sounds like a solid program and it should launch very soon. Hey. Hey. Hey, what's up? It's Kevin the Entrepreneur. Oh, what? hi. Hey, hey, everyone. Yeah. Oh, I was just walking by and it's like, oh, you know, it's been a while since I've been on Drive Girl Drive's channel, so mm. figured I'd stop by on it again. No, this is for the rideshare guy. Oh, this is drive, drive? No, I'm too, this is this week in rideshare news. Oh, oh hey, I guess I made it on the channel. <laughs> you were talking about Uber Pro and yes. how they did all these things. Well, here's the thing. Okay. You're not wrong. Okay. But it's more complicated than that. All right. Because as I was doing research on it, it's not consistent in every market. For starters, I'm sure you've gotten the email where it says people make three to six percent more earnings after they reach a certain point. Right. Uh, from all accounts, that is no longer a thing. You are not making extra money anywhere. Now, by all accounts, because they're obviously still advertising that. Right, it hasn't even launched everywhere, right? Right, but okay. so far, we cannot find a single market where you will be getting cash back rewards for hitting a certain point in the Uber Pro program. Wow, okay. So that's the first complication. Secondly, the benefits are different. There mm -hmm. are some areas, like one of the things that they're doing is like tuition money. A couple markets 
apparently that's not available. Okay. But meanwhile, in some markets where that is available, like roadside service is very different from what other markets look like. So it's not consistent. They haven't figured it out. It's still in testing mode, mm -hmm. we should mention. They're just, they're still testing it out. It's not finalized. So by the time this video goes up, there could be more changes. So please keep that in mind before you comment. They're figuring it out, but here's my thoughts on this. I think they should have got this figured out before they started rolling it out. They should have figured out what they wanted to do, at what point, you know, you wanted the rewards, what they were gonna be. They haven't figured that out, it seems like. They shouldn't be advertising that you're gonna make more money because you're not making more money. So one of the things that I'm thinking about when they're announcing these changes, because them taking away to three to 6%, you know, some people pointed out, well, that's not a lot of money, mm. but it's still some money. So far, it looks like the direction Uber is going, because they've said something to this effect, is that there will not be any cash bonuses in the near future for any Uber Pro drivers, regardless what status you're gonna get to. You will simply have rewards and you will unlock more rewards as you go along. This is the best that I understand it at the moment. Okay. And that after testing, you wind up with more in rewards than you do in cash. And I have to say, looking over it, the roadside assistance, the maintenance discounts, which I think you get anyway, mm. the cash back on the gas card, the credit card, the tuition payment. Uh, that all, on paper, it does sound like you're getting more. Right. But as another UberTuber pointed out when he showed like how he made an extra $50 a week on it, the rewards have to equal that amount of money or more to be worth it. And he doesn't think they do. And the reason is because not everyone's going to be using these perks. Right. Okay, so you have the roadside assistance. Are you gonna need it every single week? No. no. You have tuition, but is everyone doing this necessarily going to school? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So it's only a perk if you're gonna use it. And then of course, as some people have pointed out, I don't know if they've pointed this out ironically or not, but people who are doing this full time typically don't have time to go to school. Exactly. Because <laughs> Uber doesn't pay you enough to do a typical six to eight hour shift. You have to work 10 right. to 14 hours to get what most $15 an hour jobs would pay. I mean, I think it's cool that they're allowing you to gift it to a family member. That is a very, very nice perk, I yeah, will admit. I think that's cool. I don't think that it's clear to a lot of people, too, that you have to maintain a certain number of rides to even stay at this level. Even if you want to stay at this level, <laughs> even though all of these benefits may not actually benefit you. Right. And it should be noted that Uber themselves don't even consider this a reward program for the best drivers. Uh -huh. because, and you want to know how I know that? How is that? Do you want to know what the PRO stands for? What does it stand for? Program. <laughs> it doesn't stand for professional. It doesn't? It stands for program. <laughs> the abbreviation is for program, and anyone can use the program. There you go. Wow. I got a fun story, too, that I want you to weigh in on. Oh, yay. I love fun stories. <laughs> are, we, are we talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie? No, we're oh. not. So I'm looking at the Facebook forum, and there's this driver who says, I hate when packs leave stuff in my car. And he basically shows a bag full of like rum and what appears to be hundreds, probably thousands of dollars. Oh my God. Why would you post that on Facebook? <laughs> is this on Facebook or Instagram? This is on Facebook. You know, it doesn't matter where it is. You shouldn't be posting this anywhere. <laughs> he goes, I hate when people leave trash in my car. Um, That's not trash. No, That's it's That's very not. useful stuff. Absolutely. So everyone's going wild about it. And... You know, as people are talking to him, they're like, how much money is it? Are you going to keep the money? What, what's going to happen next? And the guy explains on how he contacted the police and they said for him to reach out to the guy. Now, apparently he tried to reach out to the guy and the guy was like, just throw it away. And then he was like, OK, I'm going to come out in 15 minutes. And then he shows his conversation with the guy to prove that the man never showed up and he didn't show any interest into what was inside of the bag. Now. From the young man's standpoint, he thinks that the guy was drunk and completely forgot that he had all this money in that bag. I've heard crazier stories. <laughs> and you never know. The guy could be extremely wealthy or a drug dealer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my question for you, someone leaves this in your car. What do you do? Well, first of all, you don't post it on Facebook or, <laughs> or Instagram. But the second right. thing, he probably did do the right thing. You take it to the police. And I think the police actually hold it for a certain amount of time. Okay. And then if no one claims it, then I think it's yours. Oh, wow. And that's the legal way to do it. And my recommendation, if this ever happens, 
yeah, um, send it to the police as lost and found. If no one claims it, then I think they give it back to you, and then it's yours to do with what you want. Um, I would feel very, very uncomfortable bringing this to anyone's house, to be honest, because it's like, I mean, I feel nervous when someone left a cell phone in the car, yeah. and I brought it to their place, like, with that kind of money, I'm. who knows where they got it, who knows know. what connections they have. Who's looking for it, any of that. And here's one of the reasons you don't want to be sharing this on Facebook, guys. <laughs> it's because you don't know who's reading your Facebook thing. It's kind of like how they say don't tell anyone on Facebook that you're going on vacation because that's like an invitation to rob you. Mm -hmm. Don't Don't show people on Facebook they have that kind of money because... Sometimes your friends aren't as trustworthy as you think they are. Yes, very true. Personally, I'm rooting for that guy to keep the money somehow. That would be a nice little payday, but he's doing it the right way, getting the police involved, and we'll just have to see what happens. I'm curious to see how this gets resolved. Right. I, I emailed him today to see what happened. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from him, but I was just like, I'm sharing this stuff with everyone because I think it's a good story. It's a good learning story. But I was like, I'm not going to disclose your information, like who you are, because I don't want people to find you and get that money from you because they know that you have it. Well, thank you so much for this. We got to do this some other time. Yes, maybe next time on your channel. You know what? Maybe we will. And you know, it's really cool for you to pop in every once in a while. So glad that Katie trusts you. Oh, yeah. She, she trusts me. She's not jealous at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a real face, by the way. I love it. I love it. You guys are fun. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to Harry's channel, please subscribe. He offers a wealth of information. And if you're curious about who I am, Cecily Jamela, and my channel is Drive Girl Drive. And you might know this guy. What's your name again? Kevin the Entrepreneur. <laughs> you know, we'll leave this information in the description as well. I'm sure you know who he is. <laughs> but in case someone has seen you for the first time, it's an opportunity for another yeah. subscriber. Well, possibly. <laughs> you never know. Just a heads up, when you go to my channel, I talk a lot. Yes, he does. And unfortunately, it's very similar to how I am in real life. Isn't it? <laughs> very consistent. Very consistent. <laughs> very consistent and very authentic. All right, you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.